Good evening, everybody. Live from the Dakota Dome at the University of South Dakota in Vermilion, the final session of the first South Dakota High School football playoffs. This is Jim Burt, along with Steve Cyphers, Sioux Falls Lincoln High football coach, our analyst Jerry Miller, and Mike Shermer will be along a little bit later. We welcome you to the 1981 South Dakota High School football playoffs, and the tonight's game will match the DeSmet Bulldogs and the Gregory Gorillas for the 11A championship. It's uh, Gregory 9 and 2, DeSmet coming in with a 9 and 1 record. Steve took a look at these two ball clubs a little bit earlier. Here's a matchup. A look at the stat sheet after eight games shows a difference of philosophy when it comes to the offenses of Gregory and DeSmet. The former likes the ground, and the latter doesn't have a fear of flying. The Gorillas of Gregory are led by quarterback Jeff Pokup, who had 762 yards rushing before entering the playoffs, but he's not alone as number seven Bob Cerny averages 6.7 yards every time he carries the ball. For DeSmet, the key is quarterback Dan Olson. As a junior, he tossed for almost 1,700 yards, and this season, he averages 191 yards an outing with a completion percentage of 58.5. 13 aerials have gone for touchdowns. Two teams, two styles, but they have one thing in common, they win. And tonight, they're playing for the championship title. Back at the Dakota Dome at the University of South Dakota, where in a few moments, uh, you'll see the kickoff for the 11A state football championship between Gregory and DeSmet. We'll be back at the Dakota Dome to give you the starting lineups and the opening kickoff in just a moment. Live from the Dakota Dome at the University of South Dakota in Vermilion, we're all set for the 11A championship game between the DeSmet Bulldogs and the Gregory Gorillas. DeSmet coached by Marv McCune. He's a native of DeSmet, graduated from Huron College. They commended tonight's game with a record of 9-1 through the playoffs. This is Marv's fourth year at DeSmet. He previously coached uh, basketball for two years at Bristol. Uh, incidentally, McCune played on the DeSmet State B basketball championship teams of 70 and 71. Uh, the Gregory Gorillas, coached by Mike Dacey. He graduated from the University of South Dakota in 1970, where he lettered three years as a tight end. And we were calling the plays when Mike was playing for Coach Joe Salem here at the university. He was an honorable mention, almost Central Conference performer. And the Gorillas come into the uh, season, or into the game tonight with a season record of nine and two. Uh, they lost a winner, 37 to six, and uh, lost to Scotland, seven to six on the season. The Smith uh, was top uh, region two point standings 56.75, and they were top ranked in the AP 11A ratings. While uh, Gregory was the top 11A region four in the point standings with 55.88, they were second rated to DeSmet in the AP class 11A poll. So certainly, it's a perfect matchup for the 11A championship. We're ready for the introduction of the players in the starting lineups. Here's Steve Cyphers. Taking a look right now at Marv McCune, the DeSmet head football coach for the Bulldogs. Two teams today, two styles. We talked about it earlier. We'll see the Gregory team try and keep it on the ground, but they've been threatening. They want to pass. On the other hand, DeSmet saying they may go to the ground. Both coaches trying to put a bug in each other's ears. Waiting right now for the starting lineups. teams seem to have a number of fans on hand today for today's action. Today, moving into this evening, glad you could join us over dinner. Let's start with the dismet. Number one, quarterback Dan Olson, 6'5", 185. He'll be doing a lot of playing for the Bulldogs. Number 30, Sean McDonald. 33, Tim Martins, 5'11", 155, he's a junior. Number 14, Jeff Gilbertson, record-setting pass receiver, 6'160", he's a senior. 15, Dave McDonald, 5'8", 140, he's a senior. 52, Charlie Anderson, 5'9", 175, junior, he's the center. 70, Devin Walco, 6'175", he's a senior. 
60, Lyndon Johnson, 6'2", 175, he's a senior. And 77, George Cavanaugh, 6'2", 205 pounds, he's a junior. Number 62, six foot tall, 185 pounds, senior Todd Monroe. And 81, Mark Schultz, 6'4", 185, he's a senior. There you have the starting offense for the DeSmet Bulldogs. Now the team that has something to say about that AP ranking for DeSmet, number one, the Gregory Bulldogs. And the Gregory fans like that. Number 60, Mark Stuckel. 5'9", 170, he's a sophomore. Number 22, Mark Fortuna, 5'9", 175 pound junior. 74 is Steve Knittel, 5'10", 185, he's a senior. 72, Stan Eaglestar, six feet tall, 200 pounds, he's a sophomore. Number of sophomores in the starting lineup for the Gorillas. Number 61, Todd Steffen, 5'9", 170, he's a senior. Number 44, six foot, two inches tall, 205 pounds, he's a senior, Mark Smolik. Number 52, 5'8", 140 pounds, junior, Blaine Eliason. Number 11, Jeff Polkup, quarterback, 5'7", 5'8". Kelly Gasson, number nine, six feet tall, 165 pounds, he's a senior, plays slot back and defensive back. Number four, Mark Clark, five, five feet, six inches tall, 140 pounds, he's a senior. And there you have the Gregory Bulldogs, Gorillas. <laughs> The officials for tonight's game, Milo Wepking of Sioux Falls will be the referee. Dale Weber of Salem will be the head linesman. Rich Greeno of Sioux Falls, the field judge, and Roan Dorn of Lennox, the umpire. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go downfield to the Vermilion High School Band and our national anthem. <laughs> Steve Mark Stuckel, who plays for Gregory as the son of a former outstanding football performer at the University of South Dakota, Kyle Stuckel, who played in the early 1960s. And uh, now his son is playing uh, high school football and one of the outstanding performers for Gregory, along with his teammates, of course. the coin toss. The Gregory Gorillas will do the kicking. Doing the kicking for them will be number 44, Mark Smollett. Averages 41.8 yards a kickoff. <laughs> Deep for the DeSmet Bulldogs will be number 33, Tim Martins, and number 30, Sean McDonald. There you see Smolik trying to get all the gear around his foot taped up just properly. They pull that toe up, they get a good boot in there, Steve. 
That's what they hope for. Now we'll see if it works. Your kickers use one of those, Jerry? No. Sometimes we use, uh, sometimes I use the shoelace. Uh, we try and teach them to keep their toe up. That's all it's for is just to lift the toe up and keep it up so they can get more height on the ball. Okay, we're underway. 11A championship. This will be the fourth one. One more to go tonight. 11 AAA. Smollett puts it down to the 11, taken by McDonald upfield, across the 20 before he's met Mark Clark on the tackle. Along with number 11, Jeff Pokup. See a lot of players on both teams going both ways, offensively and defensively. Offensively for the Bulldogs at quarterback. Dan Olson, 6'5", 185, he can throw. The Bulldogs break the huddle from the I formation with a wide slot. He looks quick. 15, Dave McDonald had it. Couldn't hold on to it. Had Second it for a and moment, 10. Didn't he? Well, he had some running room there, too, if he'd have, if he'd have got the handle on that. McDonald against Beers for the other night. Got a few passes on that quick slant. Gregory, you'll see a split six defensive look. Does that take away the slant, give them any advantage? Well, it, it, it depends on what they do in their secondary. The, the people up front really don't uh, have anything to do with that. Second and ten from split backs. Olsen takes the snap up again, wants to throw. Downfield, McDonald, he grabs this one out about on the 41-yard line. Same play, wasn't it? Well, not quite, Jim. Instead of slanting, uh, instead of going underneath, he, uh, he breaks it up the field. Instead of hitting him quick, uh, he hits him in the middle, uh, down the uh, field a ways. You'll see it here. Got the outside man sliding to the inside uh, and down the middle. Very well thrown ball. He's only 5'8", had to go up for it a little bit bigger. Might have been able to run. First and 10 from the 42. Olsen from the eye. Again, this time to Sean McDonald up the middle. Good forward surge by the Desmet offensive line that time. Spot the bottle, spot the ball at about the 47. A pickup of five brings up a second down five situation. Two different moods in the locker room before the game. I talked to Coach Mike Dacey, very quiet. Nobody says a word. Desmet, on the other hand, very loose. Second and five, the pitch to wide to McDonald. Kelly Gasson, number nine, brings him down on the corner. Pickup of about one yard. All we were running there was just a little quick toss to the outside and trying to get um, trying to get McDonald outside of that defensive end, but they covered that very well. Got third and about three. They've got to get to the Gregory 48 for that first down. Marv McCune says they'll pass to set up the run. Olsen, a quarterback, takes the snap, the fake. He wanted to throw to McDonald, but he was knocked down by Polkup. And I think we'll have a pass interference call. Yeah, that was definitely a good, uh, definitely a good call. I don't think the defender even saw, uh, even realized he was going to throw the ball yet. We're going to see it on the replay here now. See, he, he hits him. Uh, he has his back to the, back to the quarterback, and he doesn't even realize it. Well, they talk to Dan Olson. He tells him to move it down, what may have been an incomplete pass. Now is a first down. Inside the Gregory 35, about the 34. So the Bulldogs, no score in the game. First drive, 10-08 left to play in the first quarter. From the eye. To give to McDonald up the middle. Picks up about eight on the play. Now they're giving the ball to the fullback and they're running right at the right at the strength of their defense, supposedly, and we'll see it on the replay here. The little handoff right to fullback. He gets right straight up the uh, middle of the field. Very well blocked by the uh, front five people there of uh, D. Schmidt. A lot of help from Devin Walco, 70. Second half, two yards. Again, McDonald up the middle. But he's brought down by 52, Blaine Eliason. 61, Todd Steffen. 
We have a timeout on the field for a measurement here. See if they picked up the first down. 9.26 to play in the first quarter. No score in the game. Gregory and East Met for the Class 11A championship. Take a look at it here. First and 10. First down, 10 yards to go from the Gorilla 23. The Gorillas being Gregory. Throughout the game, you'll see 64 and 64 to Smet, Sean Sheffield, and Lyndon Johnson, who is 60, bringing in the plays. Marvin McCune calls about 90% of his plays. They give to the second man through Tim Mertens, but he's met by Steve Knittle, 74, who says, not this time. Lyndon Johnson. Don't suppose he was the namesake of our former president? <laughs> Kind of see the replay here now to the tailback. He didn't have too much room uh, to run there. That was uh, played very well by uh, number 74, uh, Steve Keetle. This time from split backs. Olsen goes up top again to Jeff Gilbertson. He fumbles. It's picked up. Number nine, Kelly Gasson has the ball down the sideline. Dan Olsen makes the tackle with some help from Dave McDonald. Popped right out of his hands. Perfect. Interception, man. I'll tell you what, uh, that Olsen's been right on the money every time uh, throwing the football, however. That's a big break for uh, Gregory here, and uh, gets the ball back almost to midfield. You're going to see it on the replay here. Very well thrown. Good job by uh, number 11 there for uh, Gregory Pokup. Knocked the ball right out. Picked up and run up the field. Good hustle on uh, De Schmidt's part there. We have it. We have a timeout, 8.25 to play in the first quarter. No score. Gregory and DeSmet. 30-yard fumble return gives uh, Gregory its first possession. With 8.25 to play in the quarter, no score in the ball game. DeSmet took the opening kickoff and had a good drive going until that fumble. And now it's Gregory's turn. They'll start from just past their 47 at the helm. Jeff Polka. Look for something fancy. Polka rolling left. Hit by Danny Olson. Kind of right. interesting that time. Uh, they had an unbalanced line with two guys in the slot to the left, and the quarterback just came, got the ball and spun it out of there and kept it. Uh, Jeff Polka turned right up the field for about a five-yard gain. <clears throat> Solid second and five. Coach Mike Dacey said prior to the game he wanted to try something flashy to start with. Picked up about four to five yards. This time he goes right. He'll do a lot of running. Brought down by 22. Freddie Timps in there. 77, George Cavanaugh had something to say. And 70, Devin Walco. 20 yards short of the first down, Steve. Brings up third and one. At the DeSmet 44. Visited the Gregory practice field this Wednesday. Coach uh, Mike Dacey said he's confident that on third and one and most of the times fourth and one, they can get the one yard. They've got the horse to do it with 44, Mark Smollett, 62205. He's not getting But it gives to Cerny, and Cerny breaks outside off tackle, and he's across the 40 for the first down to about the DeSmet 39. Pretty hard run that time by Cerny. Uh, we're going to see it on the replay here. Gives the ball to the tailback, and he just runs for day daylight outside. This more than enough to get the first down. Now Gregory moving the ball from a slot eye formation. Poke up underneath. Got a quick whistle. Something did some. Somebody did something wrong. Ellie, the figure on the white. Illegal procedure fired. Kind of interesting that time they were going to run a little bit of a counter back inside. Looks like they had uh, maybe a little running room if they hadn't had that penalty. It'd be interesting to see if they come back that same play. They average 4.8 yards a carry on the season. That includes the playoff games. First and 15 from the Dismet 44. Boca a quarterback, Cerny dots the eye. Inside counter. 
to give to Cerny, who gets across the 35-yard line. Cerny had a good run on that. Uh, Mark Stuckel, uh, we'll see it on the we'll see it on the replay here. Now Stuckel, number 60, gets a good block. He's a scooter, isn't and he? And number seven, Cerny gets up inside very, very well. Brings up about a second down six situation. We got the double slot here to the left side now. They give to Smolik up the middle. He bowls ahead. Almost to the 30, still short of the first down. Boy, is he a hard runner. Holy cow, does he's he pretty good horse in there. 6'2, 205. He picks him up and puts him down. As a sophomore, they said he ran a 4'6. He's gotten bigger since then and slowed down a step. That makes him 4'7, huh? <laughs> Third and one, Steve. About the 30. Third and one, power eye formation. The Smiths got their people up front. They give to Cerny off right side. Tim Mertens was there to first get a hand on him, but he can't bring him down. And I believe they have a first down. Their second one in this drive. Started on their own 48-yard line. Looked like that was going to be run inside, and then Cerny kind of breaks it to the outside. Uh, uh, he had a good individual effort out there on the outside by himself to get the first down. First and 10, 541 to play in the first quarter. We're scoreless so far. Both of Rides, Smolik doesn't give and keeps behind him. Picks up almost seven yards. That little guy's the scooter. He did a good job of riding him through there that time. Uh, carried out the fullback carried out the fate. Yeah, that. Uh, I'm not sure if that. We're going to see it on the replay here. I'm not sure if that's. Uh, if that's called that way, or if he has an option whether to give it or pull it out. But uh, he did the right thing. Got him right down there to almost the 20-yard line. <clears throat> Holcomb has 909 yards rushing on the season. He's second, second, down. To, second to Cerny. Second and three to pitch out wide to Gasson, who gets across for the first down before being brought down by Devin Walco, 70. Great execution that time by uh, by Pokup. Uh, he had the pressure put on him right away, and he got the, he got the pitch out there, and uh, he didn't have much time. Very well executed. Credit to Jeff Gilbertson, 14. Also in on the play, making the stop. But DeSmet has to do a little bit better. They're... Gorillas are on the drive, first and 10 from the 16. A run from a slot eye, the slot to the right. Here's the pitch to Cerny. One block from Smollett doesn't take hold. Mertens can't make the tackle. And Danny Olson drives him out of bounds at about the eight or nine yard line. Uh, Jerry, when he gets to that corner and he starts up field, he scoots, doesn't he? Yes, he sure does. Yeah, he's got, we're gonna see it on the replay here. He's really got good quickness. Starts inside and then breaks to the outside. I'm not too sure. Maybe he didn't have a little more running room to the inside, but uh, uh, I was going to say that too. They know where they want to run with football, and he knows what he can do. So, uh, you know, we can't be second guessing him. Second down, three yards to go from the nine. They give the turning off the left side. Depending on the spot, he'll be close. Just run a little isolation up there on the left side. Uh, there's a shot of uh, Mike Daisy. He wants time out and wants to make sure that uh, they don't have any mix-ups here and they get it in the end zone. We have a first uh, first and 10 to go for the uh, first and goal, I guess, for Gregory. 4.33 to play in the first quarter. It's a scoreless ball game. This man, he's, in a, he's a farmer. And McCune says he makes the difference. First and goal, the give. The Cerny, he's in, he'll score, touchdown. The Gorillas go on top, 6-0. I'll tell you what, they're awful tough up front, and uh, seems like every time uh, they have a you know, very crucial play, they want to run. They run. They're running right behind uh, uh, Stuckel there on the left side. That's a good block by their uh, by the fullback. We'll see it one more time. Uh, Mark Solik has a good block right here, number 44. They're gonna go for two. They give it to Cerny again, but he stopped this time. Olsen puts a pop on him and underneath the pile. Number 33, Timmy Martins. 
And so with 4.30, it took him just three seconds on the clock to score that touchdown in one play. 4.30 to play in the first quarter. It's Gregory 6, he spent nothing. Uh, the, uh, Gregory's touchdown came on an 11-play, 52-yard drive with 4.30 to play in the first quarter. A six-yard dash by Bob Cerny put them on top. And again, Mark Smolak will do the kicking for the Gorillas. Deep 33, Tim Martin. 30, Sean McDonald. Here's the boot. Not deep. Bouncing around on the 20. Somebody better fall on it. Sean McDonald does. They'll take over on their 20. Number 12, Tom Coughlin had an opportunity to field that ball. Apparently he either didn't want to or wasn't supposed to field the putt. And I think they could have picked up a little running room there. Yeah, you get uh, just like all uh, all kick returns, you know, you can't let that thing bounce around. You got to get it picked up and get up the field. Lose an awful, yard, awful lot of yards by letting it bounce around. First and 10, the Smith starts over again upstairs. Batted down by 72, Stan Eaglesar. job right here by uh, by Eagle Star. He comes in, gets his hands up, gets the ball knocked down. Good defensive play. Second down, 10 yards to go, just across the 20. This time the wide out to the top of your screen. Olsen wants to throw. He's under pressure. Got hit from the blind side. Number 60. Eagle Star Mark, again on the tackle. Mark, Mark Stuckel is uh, Stuckel is the one who made the play from the backside, I think, Jim. We see that on the instant replay. Pickup of almost two yards. A uh, loss of, uh, excuse me, three yards. Third down, 13. No doubt they'll try to go upstairs. No doubt they'll try to make a fire out of me and run it. <laughs> from the shotgun. Under right pressure down. again, the screen, dumped off to McDonald. He's got a few blockers in front of him off the left sideline. Not enough for the first down. Good pursuit by 61, Tom Steffen across the way. Also, uh, Kelly Gasson was over there. There are a lot of people over there. Good defensive uh, effort by Gregory. Kelly Gasson, number nine for the Gregory Gorillas, is uh, the leading interception man. For Gregory, he has four on the year. And he'll be back to handle the punt return duties along with number seven, Bob Cerny. It's our first punt of the game. And it's Good. not a bad one. He's got him in trouble. Bounce out of bounds about the 31-yard line of Gregory. Dan Olson, not a, only a very fine quarterback, but a fine punter. Several universities are looking at him to do both. Averages 40.2 yards per punt. He's also a two-year starter in basketball, Steve, and an excellent golfer. He passed for 1,698 yards last year as a junior when the Bulldogs had an 8-0 record. Now Gregory's going to line up in that double slot again. It'll be interesting to see if the quarterback keeps the ball again. He rolls left behind Smollett. Not much room. Brought down by 24, Charlie Gronwald. Oh, it's a good thing he was in there, too, because if he wouldn't have, uh, he'd still been running. They ran unbalanced to the left that time, Jerry. You bet. Uh, they've got uh, they got three down linemen to the left, and then they've got two guys in the slot, and then uh, they're split in. And uh, he's not out very far, and that's the second time they've they've run that same play with the quarterback just keeping the ball. We saw that cheerleaders try to get something going for the Bulldogs. Call it a pickup of two, second down, eight yards to go. This time he rolls right. George Cavanaugh gets a hand on him, can't keep him, wants to throw. Downfield, out of bounds to Bob Cerny. 77, Cavanaugh put some pressure on folk at that time to make a decision. You bet. Uh, I don't think, uh, not too sure he really, uh, he really wanted to throw that. I think maybe he probably wanted to run, but uh, had the good pressure by D. Smith there, and he didn't have much choice. 
Gregory leading 6 0 with 2.29 to play in the first quarter. Faced with a third down, eight yard situation. Look, look at the Gregory, uh, the Dismet defense. They'll play a 4 4 stack. Four down linemen, four linebackers stacked behind them in the I formation. Balance line this time. Inside counter to Cerny. They don't get it. Stop by 62, Todd Monroe, 52, Charlie Anderson. Yeah, they're forced to punt for the first time. Well, I'll tell you, uh, D. Smith was playing a 44, and they had both their corners up on the line of scrimmage. They had 10 people up there within two yards of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Well, we have a uh, Gregory a player shaking up. Here comes a, uh, another look at that, Jerry. Yeah, there's the, there's a the replay. Uh, wasn't much room for, for Cerny to uh, run there. Got the wind knocked out of Cerny a little bit there, the way it looks. Cerny gets a big hand. The uh, Gregory trainer out there, or one of the coaches, uh, all the teams have the services of the University of South Dakota training expertise from Rob Williams. So it's here for U University of South Dakota athletic teams. Jeff Polkup also does the punting for Gregory. 29.8 yard average up in the air. Taken by Sean McDonald, who Good. loses a little bit of ground and brought down by wide open field tackle there. Paul Thomas, 54. Good hustle and good effort on uh, Gregory Park. And DeSmet takes over on their 35. <laughs> With Olsen wanting to throw, Coach Mike Dacey says of Gregory, he'll send Smolik 44 anytime he does want to drop deep. He rolls left this time, keeps it himself upfield, picks up a few yards, about seven. Call it eight. He's a good hard runner. He not only throws it uh, well, but he runs the ball very well also. He gave a pretty good burst there after uh, about uh, three or four yards. They've... Uh, the Schmidt now, uh, that time they ran away from, uh, you'll see it on the replay here, they're running away from, from Gregory's uh, strong safety or their extra man that they have over here, uh, number 11. It'll be kind of interesting to see if they try and go that short side again. From the eye, second and two to give to McDonald. Good leg drive that time, Jerry. Got him an extra yard. Yeah, boy, he's, uh, <laughs> he picks him up and puts him down for only being 5'8 uh, and 140, uh, 140 pounds. Picks up the first down. Ball now in the, uh, the spent 46-yard line. Brock running down with a minute five to play in the first quarter. And Gregory with a 6-0 lead. First down, 10 yards to go from the eye. Take to the fullback. He wants to run this time all the way. Yeah, that's uh, that's the same option that they ran away from uh, uh, from Gregory's strong safety, and they're just trying to get Olsen out there one on one, trying to confuse their their secondary play a little bit, and it gets them about six yards. So they got second about four now. Brought down by Kelly Gasson. Second down four. 32 seconds on the clock in the first period from split backs. Wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. Olsen, they give to McDonald over the left side. First That's the down. first down. Okay, we're going to see this on the replay here now. See McDonald just on a straight dive. There's a blocking up front. Okay, number 64 there is uh, Sheffield. Does a good job opening that hole up on the left side of uh, De Schmidt's offensive line. This is going to be the last play of the quarter, I believe. At the Gregory 43, first and 10. Olsen at the helm. The gift to Timmy Martins. He's out over the 40, down near the 35. Well, he looked for daylight that time and uh, found the hole, Jerry, for a pretty good game. Excellent, excellent job of running on Martin's part. Uh, he runs straight ahead right behind his blockers and it's kind of filled up and he just kind of uh, slides off to the left. Uh, that's a great effort. End of the first quarter, there's the score. Gregory 60 spent nothing. To get here of the championship uh, battle tonight, the Smith defeated Sioux Valley 29-23 in overtime and Beersford 6-0 in a great ball game. 
in the semifinals while uh, Gregory defeated Lemon 22 to 2 and a real barn burner got Tyndall Tabor 12 to 8. We saw that sign Gregory best in the West. Speaking of West, three teams within 30 miles have been here for the championship game. Last night, winner a champion. Before that, Cologne lost to Bridgewater. And now Gregory would like to add their name to the trophies. Olsen from the shotgun wants Jeff Gilbertson off his hand. Good defensive play by Mark Clark, number four. Excellent job. Uh, Gregory's back there. Uh, they're playing a playing a 43 and then they have a strong safety to one side and then they have a three deep uh, secondary and uh, they did a good job on that it's a good pressure up front call it third down and four from the 37 Charlie Anderson does the snapping the pitch bobbled by Tim Martins Olsen came back for it. DeSmet has it. Olsen made the recovery. Uh, we're going to see this on the replay. See the defensive end goes to the pitch man. It wasn't a very good pitch that time. Kind of bounced off the shoulder pads of uh, number 33 there, Tim Martins. Back line. Punt formation for Gregory. Or for DeSmet. Olsen booms one down in the right corner, the far corner. Oh. Out of bounds. About the four-yard line. Great kick. <laughs> Boy, you're right, uh, Steve. He can do everything. He can do everything. That was a great kick. I had a lot of hang time, too. We have a timeout of the field with 11 to 17 to play in the first half. It's Gregory Six, and he spent nothing, and we got a dandy goal. Well... That's been very true here the past couple of days. Welcome to Vermillion, the football capital of South Dakota for the 1981, the first ever South Dakota State High School football championships. And uh, we've had some dandy games. One yesterday afternoon, two last night, and a good one going here this afternoon, this early evening. O'Gorman and Yankton clash next in the finale, 11 AAA. First and 10 from the four, Polk of Keeper. Brought down by 24, Charlie Gronwald. Jerry, they're hitting pretty good down there. You can hear the pads pounding all the way up here. I'll tell you what, uh, both sides, both sides are playing very well on defense, and uh, seems like Gregory's been able to move the ball just a little bit. Here are the first quarter stats. Uh, first down, you see, uh, DeSmet has the edge by one. Rushing 60 for Gregory, 42 DeSmet. Passing, DeSmet 36, Gregory none. Total 60 for Gregory, 78 for DeSmet. Possession time, 650 to 510. Second and seven from the seven. The toss to Cerny out. Knocked out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. He'll be just a little bit shy of the first down. Knocked out of there by number 33, Tim Martins. 81, Mark Schultz. Let's see it on the replay here now. Uh, they had that double slot again, just toss the ball out in the flat to Cerny, and he's down to about 13 and a half, 14 yard line. That brings up a third down and one yard situation. Not really one yard, I'd say it's a little bit less than that. And Gregory looks at DeSmet with a power eye. They give to Cerny, he's across. But got it. I'll tell you what, uh, DeSmit's got, uh, they got nine and 10 people on that line of scrimmage. Unofficially, we have five first downs for Gregory now. We're gonna get it on the replay here now. There are a lot of people coming in there. Boy, and that Olsen's all over the place. Number one, he's their free safety and their quarterback and their kicker and uh, he's a good football player. That's, so, excuse me. Says he'd like to win this game and then the state bees in basketball. <laughs> The pitch to Cerny, out to the left side. Smolik in front, knocked down. By number one, Danny Olson, and 22, Fred Temp. Played, got, that was played very well that time by uh, DeSmit. He got a corner, Cerny, because he has some speed. Yes, he sure does. Makes it about a second down and eight situation. 
from the 18. 9.45 left to play in the half. Gregory leads to Smith 6-0. Polk up underneath Thomas at center. Rolls right. He wants to run it. Smolik out front. Cerny out front. Down the 30. Out across the 35-yard line. Great block by number seven, Bob Cerny, out there in front. He also uh, had, had a couple of good blocks to get him outside there at the line scrimmage. Now the Gorillas pick up their sixth first down. We're going to see it on the replay here now. Number, good block by number nine. Going to see a good one coming up right here by Cerny, number seven. Yeah, just missed it outside the screen here. Right there it is. Gets him an extra five or six yards. On the tackle, Danny Olson. First down, ten yards. Ball just across the 34. <laughs> to get the small like up center. Charlie Anderson's there to stop him. Kind of an interesting set there where they put both those... Uh, running backs in the slot over there together and they get a split in they get it kind of tight in there you don't really stop him at the line of scrimmage <laughs> boy you sure don't i tell you he he runs very very hard when he's got that football tucked under his arm 6 2 205 uh, he picks him up and puts him down pretty good brings up a second and six the 38 you may hit him with the line of scrimmage you just don't stop him and again with the double slot formation Polk up underneath center. Sprints left. Cuts up field. For a sideline, Freddie Tim gives chase. Drives him out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what. He's, uh, <laughs> he's really a scrambler and a hustler. It doesn't make any difference whether he's on offense or defense. Uh, that Polk up, he's all over the place. Yep. I like him. We're going to see it on the replay here now. He starts inside, goes inside again, then he goes outside. Freddie Tim, 22, gets a hold of him. Number 22 there does a good job uh, uh, keeping him from getting up the field, making more yards. Third down and two yards, again, from the power eye formation. And we have a timeout called by the Gorillas. I think maybe uh, Polk up there saw something he didn't like with uh, about uh, four down people and about five linebackers. So he decided to call timeout. It's still a 6 nothing ball game in the second quarter, 8.39 to play. We'll be back in the Dome in just a moment as we look at Mike Dacey talking to the Gorilla. Uh, Shot of the Gregory uh, Ball Club with Coach Mike Dacey in the blue sweater there, talking things over. Gregory started this drive after a fine punt by DeSmet on the uh, Gorilla four-yard line. Ball is now spotted on the Gregory 42-yard line. They picked up a couple of first downs in this drive. They perhaps, uh, hopefully, will try to extend their 6-0 lead. To keep the drive going, they need two yards. It's third down. Make the small like the pitch out wide to Cerny. Touchdown. He's got lots of room. Cross midfield. He's gone. Blitz is there. Olsen oh. giving chase. Brought down by Jeff Gilbertson, 14. Good run down there by Olsen. Tell you what, they did a great job. Uh, they really oh, thought they did. They thought they were going to go inside that time, and uh, the quarterback pulled the ball out. We're going to see it on the replay here now. Looks like they're going to run inside to the fullback. Polka pitches the ball out to Cerny, and he just gets outside, gets turned up field. That's a great run. The Smith made a great effort there in picking him up. 48 yard dash there by Cerny. You bet. And right down the middle of that, too, is old number one there, Olsen. Didn't look for a moment there as Olsen was going to catch him. Inside the 10, first and goal, 8-16 left to play in the first half. The slot eye, both of them. It's just Cerny again, he bobbles this one and falls on it at the 15. Well, you know, that's the, that's the chance you take when you play, uh, when you uh, try and run the option where you have, have the option of either giving it to the fullback and pulling it out and pitching the ball. And uh, we're going to see it on the replay here. Really wasn't that bad a pitch. Uh, Cerny just didn't find the handle. Uh, those, those pitches always made me nervous, Jerry. Huh? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, Oklahoma, as good as they are, I listened to their game this afternoon. In the third quarter, they had eight turnovers, and you better believe they probably were all on that same play right there on the option. Yep. They made me nervous, too. A guy named Ron Harris. I blocked for him at Colorado State, and Ron had bobbled one once in a while. Just kidding, Ron. All right, back to the action. Second down and 15 to go for the touchdown. Polka acts like he wants to throw. Brought down by 70. Too much Walker trouble. Gets in there. 
Oh, they come out of that pretty good shape. Yeah, they got the football back, but uh, lost a few yards, so uh, it's going to be third down. That was the only good thing, Jerry, that happened that yeah, time. Yeah, third and about 22 here, I think. We're going to see it on the replay. Good pressure there. Got a little stunt coming on the inside. Not much, not much room there to run by uh, number 70, Dean Wilco. Had to be pretty good uh, coverage of the secondary that time for him to start. Well, they can't get a first down. They need a touchdown. They need 22 yards to do it. The double slot formation. Polk up sprints left. It's a reverse. 83, Rob Barrons can't find room. Doesn't fool 33, Tim Martins. And DeSmet has caged the Gorillas. Well, oh, boy. Looks like they lost a couple yards again there. That was played very well that time by DeSmet. They weren't fooled at all on the backside. You didn't sleep much last night pulling that one out, Cyphers. <laughs> we'll see it on the replay now here. Defensive left side, they stay right at home. They aren't fooled one bit. Right here, two people are number 33 and uh, number... We're going to have a field goal yeah, try here. See it all. 52, Charlie Anderson. He threw the strap away. Smaller tries for the 41-yarder. It's up. But short. it's a little bit short. And about the best thing Gregory got out of that drive was they ate up the clock. Ate up the clock, and uh, DeSmith doesn't get the ball... Uh, any place other than the 20-yard line. So, uh, you know, they had a try for a score. They got down there close, didn't score, but had a chance for the field goal. Now DeSmith's got to go 80 yards to get on the board. Might be a while before uh, Coach Mike Dacey tries that play again, huh? Well, that, what's it wrong with that? That's just, good as, that's just good as a punt, Jim. Well, well, no, no, I don't mean the field goal. I mean oh. that reverse. Oh, well, that might be. No, no, the field goal was an excellent choice. First and 10 from the 20. Olsen now, he does a little pitching of his own, this time to Martins. Out across the 25, still on his feet. Jeff Polka wraps him up, brings him down up about the 26. Extra yard there, good leg drive. He's a tough little runner. Well, I'll tell you what, there's, uh, as we've seen the last, uh, the last four ball games here now, uh, there's a lot of good football players on the field. We'll see it on the replay here now. Olsen starts to his left on the option, pitches the ball right away. Got a good block there, uh, Good job by number 11 and number 7 there from Gregory. Cerny and Polkup. Tailback and the quarterback on offense. Picked up about 7 yards. This time to McDonald up the middle. Tell you what, he's only 140 pounds, but uh, he runs off hard. Shy of the first down brings up a third and short one. Less than a foot. Well, Gregory had gone 48 yards in their last drive in 12 plays, or 76 yards rather than 12 plays. It took five and a half minutes off the clock, but uh, come up with no score on a 41-yard uh, field goal attempt, which was no good. Third down, less than a one from split back. Olsen sneaks, tries to sneak it across. I don't know whether he made it or not, did he? I don't know. It's going to be close, Jim. I know 60 Stuckel was there, and they do have it. Referee Milo Wepking said yes, he got it. Well, they didn't get it by much. Six first down for DeSmet. Gregory has seven so far in the first half. We have 4.18 to play. Clock moving. Six nothing. Gregory over to Smith. They're going out at each other pretty good, Jerry. Yeah, they sure are. Uh, offensively and defensively. They're both doing some things well offensively and playing very well defensively. First and ten from the 30. Quick pass to Gilbertson. He's out there, but so is number 11, Jeff Polkup, and number four, Mark Clark. Trying okay. to isolate him one-on-one -on -one with the uh, cornerback out there. I, yeah, and they, uh, they covered that very well. Ends up making about a yard, yard and a half. Clark played that about as well as you can play it. He's another one of those big guys out there on the field. 5'7", 140 <laughs> pounds. I like those guys. Uh, good little oh. high school player. All those short guys like short people, you know. <laughs> Pick up a two, second down, eight yards. Charlie Anderson will snap the shotgun. Exchange to Olsen. He wants to throw, wants to go over the top to Gilbertson, but that's picked off by Clark, 44. Gregory has the ball. 
just inside their own 40-yard line. Call out the 39. Played that one very nicely, too. Very nicely. 5'7", 140 doesn't make any difference. We're going to see it on the replay here now. Clark, uh, he plays his position very well. Makes a great reception right there. Good job for 5'7", 140 pounds. I love like it. a center fielder over his shoulder. Here's We're another look it on the replay it. again. There he is again. Excellent job by Clark. Ball was overthrown. He was in the right spot. So now with three minutes, 10 seconds left to play in the half, Gregory would like to add to their 6-0 lead over DeSmet. Polk of a quarterback, Smarlick at the fullback. The give is to Smarlick. He's out over the left tackle to about the 43, maybe the 44. Now he's, uh, he runs awful hard when he's got the football. He's a big kid. Pick up a four, call it second and six. Tell you what, Mike Dacey told me they'd probably run over the right side of their offensive line and that that's where their seniors played, but they've gone left just as effectively. Yeah, they sure have. This is Polk up again to Smolik over the right side this time. Good job again by Smolik. He's getting uh, he's getting some holes opened up there for him, and they're, uh, they're doing a good job maintaining their blocks up front. He picks up about five, third down, and less than one. 2.09 left to play. Well, they had a couple of turnovers in this game and uh, very, it's been quite penalty free. Two well-coached clubs going at it. Jeff Polka from the power eye. To get to the second man through is Cerny. Should have the first down. Well, as we mentioned last night, Steve, and I think it's well worth repeating, all of the teams we've seen so far have been very well uh, coached and uh, have been yeah, we're going to see, uh, well see the right side of uh, Gregory's offensive line coming off the ball here. Good surge right there. Excellent job. Good job by the linebacker and the defensive back. You're back to live now. And that's Polk about down to about the 46-yard line. Last shot was up close and personal. You bet. That's uh, that's an excellent job by the crew down there on the field. Got to know number 54, the center, Paul Thomas, doing the snap and a poke up now. Second down, call it seven. Inside the DeSmet 47. 123 left to play in the first half. From the I formation. Polka fakes and pitches. This time to Cerny again. Not much there. They were waiting for him. Jeff Gilbertson was kind of sitting there, come my way. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, they've played that. Uh, the Schmidt has played that option just about as, uh, as well as it could be played, with the exception of that one play. Uh, where Cerny went about uh, 45 or 50 yards. And that was on a on a short yardage situation. Looked like it was going to be inside, and I think they were probably in a uh, probably had six down linemen that time, where normally they would only have four. Had a shot of Todd Monroe there, the linebacker for DeSmith. Got a third and nine. Polka drops back, wants to throw. Under the pressure. Tunnel. They brought Fred Tim from the linebacker spot. Who? Devin Walko, 70, 77, George Cavanaugh. They all got there. That was a full-scale blitz. Well, I'll tell you what, it looked like they had about five trucks going in there that time. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they were all loaded. Yes, they were. We're going to see it on the replay here. Good pressure by number 77. About four, four different people in there. That's a great job by DeSmet. We're running out of time in the first half. One of those trucks, 22 Freddy Tempest, one of those economy models. One of those economy models. 5, 10, 155. I like those guys. <laughs> 22 seconds to play in the first half. It's Gregory Six and he spent nothing. Back in a moment. Part of the crowd uh, here tonight is going to continue to grow, I'm sure, by the time the second game rolls around. There's the boot by Polka. Oh, that takes a gorilla roll down inside the five. One more Jim bounce. Jim picks it up. Kelly Gasson drives him out of bounds. I think you're right, Jim. Well, uh, it, as Jerry said a moment ago, you can't second guess these uh, young men, but it looks as though it was going to bounce into the end zone had he let it go. Hey, um, doesn't really make too much difference. There's not. Uh, I tell you what, I think he made the right decision, Jim, because uh, uh, there's only 10 seconds left in the half. It's been right. a normal situation. Yeah. He probably would have let it go. This way, all he's trying to do is that's one extra play, uh, maybe be able to run the ball back, you know? Yeah, that's what I mean. There's not enough yeah. time and a half. Ten seconds. First and ten from the 11, and Olsen falls on it. Credit Mark Fortuna, 22 with the tackle. 
And that's how it's going to end of the first half. Gregory six, DeSmet zero. All right, the end of the first half. Gregory six, DeSmet zero. Let's go down on the field now and to Mike Shermer. No problem. Well, folks love it, so that's no why we do it. No problem. I'll give you all the time. Okay. 15 months, I guess. Well, Mike, six nothing. You've got the lead at the end of the first half. Uh, your ball club's playing well, but I got a feeling you're not 100% uh, satisfied with the offense at the early going. Well, uh, I am, except for when we got down here in a scoring drive, uh, we should have put it in. Uh, we had an option play and it was set up to just drop the football. But I think we're doing things well. You know, you got to remember, it's the Smith's a heck of a football team. But uh, if you can see, we're moving the ball up and down the field. Your poke up by your quarterback, a little 11, uh, is a heck of a football player. Yeah, so we feel we have a heck of a football team. He's a great quarterback. Back, but we have other people that go with him. Uh, Cerny, Small, Gasson, uh, our offensive line is doing a good job. Uh, it scares me every time he puts the ball up from DeSmith, though, but uh, right now we're containing him pretty well. What do you do, if anything, differently the second half? Well, uh, they're bringing up almost a nine-man line. They're bringing the corners up tight. Maybe a little play action, I think. Uh, uh, delay one count and then uh, out in the flat might, might burn them. Uh, we'll see. I will watch for it. Good luck to you the second half. Thank you very much. Back up to the booth. All right, thank you very much, Mike, and uh, to Mike Dacey. Our thanks uh, to Mike. That, uh, you saw the halftime stats up there. Was that halftime? That was the first quarter stats, beg your pardon. Just, just got a quick uh, look at them. So we're at halftime of the Dakota Dome in the 11A uh, state football championship game with Gregory hanging on to a 6-0 lead over DeSmet. We'll be back at the Dakota Dome in just a moment. There's the score at halftime of the 11A class, uh, class 11A championship game here at the Dakota Dome in uh, Vermilion at the University of South Dakota. And you're looking now uh, from the west side of the field across to the east uh, seating area. We're situated on the west side and uh, about 40 feet above the playing level. Here at the Dakota Dome, the playing uh, surface is of uh, artificial uh, surface and it's 17 feet below ground level. From the floor up to the top of the dome, we have uh, about 110 feet. Coming onto the field now, it will be presentations uh, for the state champion punt pass and kick contest. Two years ago, the National Football League in Fort... Thanks, Jim Burt. Fred Ertz and I are here in uh, Master Control taking a look at the football game via videotape. And that's what we have for you, of course, at halftime and between games is a look at the highlights. Now, there hasn't been an awful lot of scoring. As DeSmet took the opening kickoff, they had a good drive going. They fumbled, and Gregory's Kelly Gass, number nine, recovered that fumble and returned it. And a good return. This was early in the ball game. And then with 4.30 left to play in the first quarter, number seven, Bob Cerny, on a six-yard dash off left tackle, got the... Uh, Gorillas on the scoreboard. Here's another look at it. It was a 52-yard drive in 11 plays. The two-point conversion after this six-pointer failed as they again gave the ball to Cerny for a try for two. He spent defense held, and it was denied. Six to nothing at the end of the first quarter. A lot of good football here in the second quarter, such as this uh, Jeff Pocock, number 11, keeping around the right end and getting a good gain and penetrating into DeSmet territory. Pocop, of course, the quarterback likes to run. Here's another good uh, offensive gain for Gregory. A pitch out to Bob Cerny again. This is a 48-yard scamper, and he took it down to the 10 inside the 10-yard line where it was first and goal, and all the watchers were thinking that Gregory's going to score, but several misdirected plays threw them back for about a 12 to 14-yard loss, and here's a 41-yard field goal attempt. It was a valiant attempt, but it just fell a little bit short and to the right. And the other defensive and offensive plays, such as number four, Mark Clark, in this pass interception late in the second quarter. Gregory again to get possession of the ball. They started a drive going. Here's another look at that interception, but they couldn't get it in the end zone. Again at halftime, it's six to nothing. Gregory leading to Smet, a couple of explosive offensive teams, and we're looking for an awful lot of that offense, that is, in the second half. Let's go back to the Dome now, and Jim Burke. All right, there's uh, a look at the DeSmet cheerleaders as we are back live in the Dakota Dome now at half, midway in the halftime of the Gregory DeSmet 11A championship game with Gregory holding a 6 to nothing lead over the DeSmet Bulldogs. In case you might have missed them yesterday afternoon in the opener for the Class A 9, 9A championship game, Bridgewater took a 6 nothing decision over Cologne. And uh, last evening, it was the Class 9AA championship going to Freeman. 
19 to 14 victor over Falkton in class 11A and a just a heck of a ball game winner defeated Vermillion 31 to 20 for 11 double A and at the completion of this game for 11 A title we will have the 11 triple A matchup with Sioux Falls of Gorman and the undefeated Yankton Bucks. In the first half, as we look at that uh, game statistically, it's uh, fairly close. We have six first downs for DeSmet, eight for Gregory, 38 yards passing for DeSmet. Gregory hasn't put the ball in the air too much. They have uh, six yards through the air, but you can see the ground game that the Gorillas have uh, mounted, 135 yards, DeSmet 46. 141 total yards offensively for Gregory to 84 for DeSmet. 22 yards and penalties for Gregory to none for DeSmet. And uh, DeSmet has had two turnovers, a fumble and an intercepted pass uh, by the Gregory Bulldogs. Gregory has yet to commit a, an error in the game. Time of possession, 13.45, not too far off, and 10.15 for DeSmet. Both teams coming out uh, onto the field right now to get ready for the second half of action with uh, Gregory leading by a score of six to nothing. Jim, here's something I bet you knew but you didn't realize. Yesterday's games, the teams that were wearing the dark jerseys, that's Bridgewater, Winner, and Freeman won the game. They all scored first. Didn't have to observe that. This time it's Gregory, they're wearing white, and they scored first. Well, we'll see if it, uh, that pattern holds true. We'll be back at the Dakota Dome and start of the second half of the Gregory DeSmet 11A championship game in just a moment. All these cola ads seem to be saying the same thing. These guys did taste tests against Coke. These guys did ads comparing themselves to Coke. And these guys compared themselves to Coke. Seems like every other cola's been trying to compare themselves to Coca-Cola. And maybe that's because in the real world, there's only one real thing, delicious ice cold Coke. That's the one that makes me smile. Yeah, just like that. You said, he ain't gonna catch me smiling this time, but I did, you went. Nose, you want it simple, you want it with Litton's new auto-cook microwave oven. Litton knows the recipes. Litton knows you want to cook with ease. It asks me what food, how much, and how I like it done. Edward's been, been the football capital of South Dakota the past two days. Let's go downfield now to Mike Schirmer. Well, Marv, a super first half. You're down six to nothing. First of all, your impressions of the first half. Well, uh, we really hurt ourselves defensively a couple times in some big option plays. We didn't read our keys the way we were supposed to. Uh, we knew they were coming, and, and we just had some trouble reading our keys, and uh, that's what happens. Super quarterback, they run the option well, and that's what we've got to stop to come back in the second half. Uh, I was satisfied with our offense, except for the, the fumble, and uh, the, well, the two fumbles, really. A fumble to pitch, where we could add a first down, and a pass. We had two, two good drives, and I was satisfied with that. We can do something offensively. Their ex offense is explosive. Are you satisfied with only the 6 nothing deficit? Yeah, we're lucky to be at 6 nothing right now with some of the mistakes we made. Uh, we can be explosive at times also, but we've got to come back and establish a good drive on offense. We've got to get the ball more than twice in one half. I haven't seen DeSmet play until the first half today, but it didn't take long to figure out that uh, Tom Olson is your, the bulk of your ball club. I think what he does the second half will dictate what you do. Yeah, really, we've got to rely on him, and, and he can throw the ball well. Uh, we should have thrown a couple other passes differently than we did. Uh, that interception really wasn't his fault. Uh, that was probably a bad call from the bench. So he's going to have to do the job for us, and he, I'm sure he's the leader. He's going to come through for us if we win this ball game. Well, Mar Super Ball Game. Best of luck to you. Have a good one in the second half. All right, thanks, Mike. Back up to the booth. All right, thank you very much, Mike and Marv McCune. We appreciate it. We're going to be set to go with a second half kickoff here in the 11A championship game between DeSmet and uh, Gregory. But first, we pause for this message. Why do so many people use jackrabbit lines? Because riding with us is the most economical way to travel. Go all across the state for under $40, or from here to either coast for less than $140. For large groups, our charter buses will take you wherever you're going affordably. And when you need to send something in a hurry, rest assured our Package Express will get it there overnight. Why do so many people use jackrabbit lines? Because we go everywhere in South Dakota. Enjoy the games. 
The South Dakota High School Football Championships are brought to you in cooperation with the South Dakota High School Activities Association. Back live at the Dakota Dome where Gregory, the Gregory Gorillas will be setting to receive the kickoff from DeSmet. They kicked in the first half. They have their choice. Jerry and I were talking. It looks like they'll uh, they like to receive rather than take the wind, huh, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> Not much wind factor in here, Steve. Uh, it's, it's beautiful in here. You know, it's, uh, you don't have to worry about, uh, yeah, that's beautiful too. <laughs> You don't have to worry about uh, those outside elements in, uh, when you get inside the dome here. Uh, it's a beautiful facility and uh, a lot of people here, and I'm sure there'll, uh, there'll be a lot more um, before we get into, this, uh, into the second game. Waiting right now for the Desmet Bulldogs to come onto the field where Marv McCune's giving them some final words of encouragement. Going into the second half, Gregory 6, DeSmet 0. DeSmet, top ranked in the AP poll, 11 man A. Gregory, second rank. Doing the kicking will be, you guessed it, Danny Olson. His legs as strong on the kickoff as it is on the punt. He's liable to boot it down there. Yeah, he sure is. He can, he can definitely kick the football, no question about that. Coach Mark McCune says number 61, Todd Steffen, may be the man to watch on these kickoffs. He's a headhunter. I don't see him on the field. If only he were on the field. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Todd Steffen's for Gregory. Yeah, Good. That's why. Good, Steve. All right. There's the boot. Action underway. Cerny has the ball. Up to about the 25. Devin Walco, 70 on the tackle, along with number 33, Tim Martins. So, yep. we're underway with 11.53 left to play in the third quarter. First and 10 from the Gregory 25. Jeff Polkup will take his crew to work. As they did so much in the first half, from the double slot formation, Polkup. Cuts up field, inside, picks up about six yards on the game. Brought down by 62, Todd Monroe, and 24, Charlie Gronewald. I think that's probably the first time they've run away from that double slot, uh, other than the uh, fullback getting the ball one time inside, and uh, trying to go away from uh, DeSmith's uh, strength a little bit, trying to run the option uh, back away from the double slot. In with the plays, number four, Mark Clark. Mike Dacey calls all the plays. A Joe Salem disciple. Again, the double slot formation. Small like a fullback. Inside. Same formation, same play. A little less the result. I'm going to see it on the replay here. Now it just takes a couple steps. No place to pitch the ball. And gets turned right back up the field. Number 60, Lyndon Johnson, getting across the line of scrimmage, but just a little too far. Too much penetration isn't always the best thing. He was in trouble right from the start that time. Well, a third down and two from the power eye. To give to Cerny, he's out over the 35. He's got the first down. Tell right. hey, you what, uh, when they have to, uh, they go to that power eye, and uh, we're going we're gonna to get a, a replay here on uh, Cerny. He gets right up in there. It's a good job of blocking by the uh, fullback, number 44, uh, Smolik, and the right side of their line. They did a good job opening up the hole there enough for the first down. You got a pretty good seam there, Jerry, to sneak through. You bet. Doesn't take much for him. Again, first and 10. This time, the double slot to the left side. About the 37. Boca wants to pass now. He launches one in the Got air. Him there. In the Danny Olsen has different thoughts. He's picked it off at about the 44-yard line across midfield. Well, he's a good athlete, I'll tell you that, Olsen. He's, uh, he just stood right in there real calm and uh, uh, just went to the football and made the, made the good interception. That's Gregory's first turnover. Here's the, here it is on the replay. Good throw, but uh, was very well covered by Olsen. He gets, uh, gets it back there and gets it back beyond the, the uh, midfield uh, stripe at about the 48-yard line. 
Here it comes on the replay again on the interception by Olsen. You can, you can see he's a good athlete, anybody that can uh, uh, keep their footing like that and their balance. Gregory has only given up, has only thrown three interceptions all year. I think we have a timeout now uh, down on the field. 9.53 to play in the third quarter. It's Gregory six, DeSmet nothing. Back live at the Dakota Dome. DeSmet with that interception has possession of the football on the Gregory 48 yard line. First and 10. They're going to work with Olsen at quarterback from the I formation. Gilbertson at the slot. They give us to McDonald up the middle. He's out across the 45 to about the 44. Pick up a four. I'll tell you what, uh, the Schmitz people that they have up front there, uh, Charlie Arm or uh, Anderson, number 52, and uh, Sean Sheffield, and uh, number 70, uh, Wilco. Those people really do a good job uh, getting off the football and. Uh, McDonald's made, uh, he made several yards on that same play right up the middle. Second and six from the 44. This time he wants to throw. McDonald across the slant pattern. A little low, he can't get to it. Certainly it was just a half a step away from intercepting that ball. Certainly he's not too often half a step away from anything. He's pretty quick. <laughs> All right, we're going to see uh, some blocking up front here on the uh, replay. Well, maybe we'll try that again next time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to that one. Here it is. Uh, here it is, but it's not the line. Uh, ball was just uh, underthrown just a little bit. Third and six from the shotgun. Olsen rolls right. He's going to keep it. He's up. He's shy of the first down. Brought down by 74, Steve Knittle. Holcomb's there. Steve Knittel played a fine game in the semifinal game against Tyndall Tabor Tuesday night. Well, we'll see what kind of field position that uh, Gregory ends up with here. Assuming that D. Smith kicks the ball, but you never know. Well, we saw the University of South Dakota, Northern Iowa this morning, Jerry, line up uh, both of them on a little sneak play, lining up for a field goal and pulled off first downs. Fourth and three, Olsen wants to throw to McDonald got across it. the middle. Ooh, He's catch. got it on the Great 31. Catch. That's why he throws the ball to him all the time, because he can catch it if he just gets it close to him. Great that was a great, great reception. Yes, it was. We're going we're gonna to see the replay here now. Little crossing pattern on the outside. Great effort by uh, McDonald. The important thing, Olsen is getting the time, of course, on the quick patterns. That gives you the time. First and 10 from the 31. The give to McDonald over the left side. Met head on by Polka. Say what, uh, there's some good football being played out there uh, right now at this particular time. Uh, D. Schmidt, D. Schmidt offensively and Gregory defensively. Uh, he's tough runner. Tough runner. If you had sound on those replays, you'd hear some smacking out there. That's They're right. Pretty tough. You bet they are. Would have been last night's game with winner Vermillion. I'd have been deaf by now. Oh, oh boy. Second and six from the 27. Olsen at the quarterback. Keeps it himself. Upfield across almost to the 20-yard line. Maybe yeah. close enough for a first down. Very uh, close, Steve. We're going to take a look at it. And referee Milo Wepking says he wants to measure. Milo's bifocals won't stretch that far. <laughs> Olsen averaging 191 yards in the air this season, but now he's showing us uh, some running ability, taking advantage of possibly some Gregory pressure on the pass, expecting him to throw. Just a couple of inches short. We're talking about that game this morning, Jerry. University of South Dakota played a whale of a ball game, very well prepared, and just surprised Northern Iowa 34 to 17. Uh, after they were behind, what was it, 14 to 7? Yes. Just completely dominated the play there after a couple of great punt return runs by Mick David. 
I believe 55 and 62 yards for TDs. Just shy of the 21, third down to give to Martins. He's up almost to the 15-yard line, got the first down. But a good drive going. That's their second first down of the drive. They have eight now. We're going to see this on the replay. This is a good call right here. Good run by number 33, Martins. Uh, Gregory's got about uh, seven people up front there, and he just broke it off tackle. It was supposed to be straight ahead, but uh, uh, ended up slamming to the outside, and we're back to live now. First and 10 from the 16. The give to McDonald. Fortuna, 22 is there to make the play. They're just chewing it up now. They've got about 37 yards in this drive. They started on the Gregory 48. Yeah, they're getting no more than about two or three yards at a crack, but they're doing an awful good job of it. Pick up a three, call it second and seven. In with the play, number 60, Lyndon Johnson. From the eye, Olsen takes inside, pitches to Martins. He's out across the 10, near the five. Very well executed that time. The Smet move with that ball pretty good right now. You bet. Olsen, Olsen makes a good fake inside, makes a good pitch. Martins makes a good cut up field, and he has a good block uh, from his fullback. We're going to see it here on the on the replay. That's his end that makes a good block there, number 81. Got a good cut inside there. Mark Schultz. You bet. That's a good run. Got third and about uh, less than a yard, probably. We'll call it third and one from the I formation. He gets the mark. Third down from down tackle. He's up. Got both of them on him. Not. The 77, George Cavanaugh says they have it. A little measure again. He's Smet moving toward the south goal to the radio screen here at the Dakota Dome. And we're going to have another measurement. It's that close again. George Cavanaugh was down there waving to say they have it. 6'2", 205, I believe him. Yeah, well, that's a pretty good spot to get the ball on the first down uh, on the six-yard line. Uh, now they got uh, don't have to worry about making the 10 yards, only six. Third first down of this drive. Smith now has nine. Gregory has nine. They have one of this third quarter. From split back, the give to Martins off the right tackle. He's going for Cavanaugh. Loco keeps his feet going. He could see that pay dirt there. I'll tell you, uh, Gregory's defensive end here is split out just a little bit wide, and they're running that straight dive right up inside, and he's kind of slamming it to the outside. We're going to see it on the replay here. He goes inside now, now breaks it a little bit to the outside. That's a good job running on Martin's part. Look at him. He's a good hustler. He's just still squirming for that extra yard. They're about two yards out. Second down, about two. Two yards from the goal line, two yards from six points, which would tie him up with Gregory. Right now, George Cavanaugh, the big fella having some problems with his glasses. And as all offensive line coaches say, you cannot block what you cannot see. That's absolutely <laughs> right, Dave. Absolutely right. I'll tell you what, they've been running behind Cavanaugh here, too. It'd be interesting to see if they... Uh, they try and go there again. Split backs to give to Martins. He's up. He's across. They did it again. Right behind Kavanaugh. He's a good job. He does a good job. He uh, he got off the football very well. Martin followed right behind him for the touchdown. 48-yard drive. 505 to play in the Don't third see quarter. see it on the replay here. Number 77, right tackle. He does a good job. So does uh, number 81, Mark Schultz there. The uh, offensive right end. says he'll do it and throws 75 percent of the time but Olsen keeps it gets across they're on top eight six and now Gregory's got their back to the wall say what that Olsen he does everything doesn't he that's a good move make the pitch that time and uh, runs the fullback inside good block here by uh, number 81 uh, Mark Schultz then Dan Olsen just turns up the field and gets in the end zone very well executed 
So now it's Desmet, eight, Gregory, six. Five minutes and five seconds left to play in the third period. 11-man Class A football championship. Polkov has the ball on the kickoff. He's upfield across the 30 to about the 33. He had some running room there, Jerry, putting a hole up the middle. Yes, they sure good did. Good ankle tackle there. Well, it'll be uh, interesting now to see if Gregory can get things going and uh, uh, get some momentum back here that uh, that the Schmitz just had and uh, get on the board. Here we're going to see the, uh, the kickoff on, on the uh, replay here. Little seam right up the middle. Excellent job in there uh, by the Smith. Number 16, Lyndon Johnson making the tackle. We give the Smolik out over the 40. Well, I'll tell you what, he's... <laughs> oh, he's a horse. He is a horse when he gets football. Number of plays, 12 plays. The Turkey spent on that scoring drive, covered 48 yards. They used 4 minutes and 54 seconds on Tim Martin's uh, six-yard touchdown run. Or a two-yard touchdown run, maybe. Two Second. yards out. Second and three from the 41. The fake to Smolik. Bokum comes up inside. He'll have the first down. Bokum, the most valuable player in the Southeast South Dakota Conference. All right, we're going to see uh, the replay here on Soka. Little fake, and he just scoots right back up the field. Boy, he gets turned, and uh, he does a nice job running with the football. Read that very well, ran to the open spot. Mark Schultz came from his outside linebacker spot to make the tackle. First and 10 from the 47, high formation from the slot. This time inside, counter to Cerny, but he stopped. They had a little problem in the backfield that time. Well, I think maybe that problem uh, was not so much a problem as it was uh, number 70, Wilco, there from uh, D. Schmidt. He really gummed up that counter to the inside. We'll see it on the replay right here. Well, number 70 wasn't the one. I guess it was uh, the uh, being on the left side there. No, 22, Freddie Temp was inside there. Right, would have been number 22. That's exactly right, Steve. Second and seven from midfield. Polkup wants to keep it out right. Got Smaller concerning in front of him. He's got room. Mark Schultz hauls him out of bounds at about the 33. But that's down. a big pickup. That was great blocking that time by, uh, by Cerny. And uh, by the fullback also, uh, uh, Smolik. We'll see it right here. Fullback and the tailback, 44 and 7. Both make a good block. There's one right there by Smolik. There's one by Cerny. And then Polkup just reads it pretty good. We'll see it now again, just on the quarterback mostly. He, did, he does a super job. Dips inside and then outside. Good job with the camera down there on the field, man. You betcha. So now, trailing by two, first and ten from the 32. Gregory on the move. The pitch to Cerny out to the left side. Jeff Gilbertson can't get him. Got a clip right there. Got a clip on number uh, 14. Who clipped number 44. We're going to see the replay here. I don't know. That's uh, not well, going to. I'm not going to debate that. But that's one of those deals. He starts up high, and uh, uh, I think he got him, Jerry, pretty good. We didn't see it on the. Replay yeah, we did, there. Jim. You did didn't it? see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw it live. I just saw it on the replay. Scott, run that back one more time. Now, see, it's question. It's questionable whether 44 really clips him or not. Right here, he hits him up high, he's and right then in the middle of the back. Well, see, he stumbles with his legs on him. That's the problem, and that's what the referee sees. Clipping on the white team, still first down. Anyway, meantime, what it does is moves <laughs> great feet back. Whether you stumble into him or go out of direct, it's still a clip. The 45, first and 23. Polkup wants to run a right. 77. Yeah. Kavanaugh brings him down. Another loss. Fine defensive play by Kavanaugh. Number 77 there, George Kavanaugh. That's a good play. So that backs uh, Gregory up to the DeSmet 48. Almost the 49 would make it second down, 26 yards to go.
I that. like uh, Jim. I like to holler at those referees anyway. You know, this is this is a good chance. See, I, I can holler. Do. I can holler and give them a bad time, and they can't get back at me now. I be a coach that doesn't, huh? <laughs> Second and 26. Call it a mile. Boca fakes once, drops back. Acts like he wants to throw. Don't believe it for a minute. Nobody down. Don Manuel wants him. George Cavanaugh. He had nobody to throw to. Oh, he had no place to go. You know that it goes back to that same old story. You know, you get a little, uh, you get a little momentum started, and you get things going, and one little mistake gets you in trouble. And we're going to see it on the replay here. Uh, Everybody's covered. Poke up. Uh, he's trying to run there and coming back to the wide side of the field. And he knows there's no place to go. He's going to just try and get up the field and get as many yards as he can. That Kavanaugh's a good football player. He's all over the field. Third down, 25 yards. Double slot formation. Bottom of your screen. Poke up at quarterback. Drops back. Left to right. Under pressure. Under Brits. Number Red Tip. Number 22. That defense Red really came forward. Like you say, Jerry, a little mistake will take the momentum away from you every time. You bet. That uh, DeSchmidt, uh, we're going to see it on the replay here now. Uh, number 22, you'll see him coming in Boy, the screen about right now. Also, Kavanaugh is right in there. And number 52 also for DeSchmidt, uh, Charlie Anderson. They was blitzing all the way. Brings up a fourth down situation. Polka now will be forced to punt. Gregory's third punt of the game. He bobbles the snap, gets it away. Sean McDonald underneath it at about the 24. Oh, he's got a wall over there. Off the left side. Look out. Oh. Steve Knittle, 74, finally uh, pushes him out of bounds. Well, they had a wall set up there, and they had that wall. They got the wall set up. He started to his right and then came back and kind of set things up there a little bit. Uh, they're setting off a good field position on about the 44 now. We're going to see it on the replay. Good job on Polkup's part there. He just bobbled it a little bit and still picks it up. Now we'll watch him start to his right. That helps set up the wall. Then he comes back, and there's about three good blocks right there. Good job by DeSchmidt. Very well executed. 33 seconds left to play in the third quarter. DeSmet leads Gregory 8-6. DeSmet has the ball. Olsen in particular. Out across the 46. Pick up a two. Brings up a second down. Eight-yard situation. On the tackle, number 11, Jeff Polkup. <laughs> you know, you have to take a look there sometimes. You don't know whether uh, uh, if they're playing offense or defense because they have so many people that go both ways. And that, uh, uh, you know, that's the name of the game. you got to get your good athletes on the field. Gregory defensively has two sophomores starting, three juniors and six seniors, while DeSmet offensively has a pretty experienced squad, five juniors and six seniors. That's the end of the third quarter. DeSmet leads the Gregory Gorillas 8-6. We'll be back in a minute. There, here it is. Right here. Well, right, here's, here's the first play uh, of this quarter. Uh, on the replay, uh, they start a little bit soon on us. They run a quick toss outside, and uh, no yards gained. We're back to live now, Steve. Third and six from the 48. Olsen rolls right. Pumps once, pumps twice. It's Got McDonald. It. He has the first down. At the Gregory 45. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, that McDonald, uh, he does a good job catching the ball. And, uh, good Dan, hands. Dan Olsen... Uh, we're going to see it on replay here. He gets a little fake pump right here and uh, gets uh, number 72 uh, off balance a little bit, throws the ball right in the seam. That's a great grab. He's Early. got a couple of pretty good catches here in this game. You bet. Earlier, Eagle Star batted one down. This time he bit on the fake. First and 10 from the 45. Olsen upfield. Out across the 40 to the 38. Brings up a second down, a long two. I'll tell you what, uh, that Olsen, as we've said uh, many times, uh, he does it all. And I'll tell you what, uh, that front uh, front five of uh, DeSchmidt's doing a good job in there, too, keeping those people out of there. Todd, you know, excuse me, go ahead, Steve. It's Todd Monroe's moving people at the left tackle position. Lyndon Johnson, 60. Second along three, Martins. Good tackle right there by Polk up again. Uh, Martin's just running that straight dive and trying to break it to the outside just a little bit once he gets the line of scrimmage. 
Going to have third and about two now. Call it third and long two. DeSmet leading Gregory 8-6, 9.56 left to play in the game. From the I formation. If he got to the line, he's got the first down. Well, I'll tell you, it's, uh, I think he's going to be a little bit short, Steve. Good job by the uh, defensive front line there of, uh, of Gregory. It's going to be fourth and about, uh, about a good foot, maybe. I think they're going to go for it. Yep, kind of looks like it. Uh, they want to keep the football. They don't want Gregory to have it. What it amounts to. They get the first down here. It's going to be big. Gregory wants a timeout now with 9.15 to play in the ball game. It is the Smet 8 and Gregory 6 in a dandy of a ball game here at the Dakota Dome in Vermilion. Back at the Dome. Where it's fourth and one for the DeSmet Bulldogs. Actually, the one is about one foot. That'll be interesting to see now if, uh, if DeSmet, uh, if we'd be a guesser here now, uh, I would guess they'd run behind George Kavanaugh if they're going to run anything uh, short. Uh, he, uh, he's been the guy that uh, has done the good blocking for him up front, he and Mark Schultz. Uh, at the end of three quarters, DeSmet has nine first downs, Gregory 11, but DeSmet has picked up... Uh, Another first down along the way here. They have uh, 10 now. Yards passing, they spent 48 to 6 over Gregory, 85 to 80 in uh, rushing. Total yards, 133 to 86. Fourth and one, the give to Martins over the right side. He's got the first down. You bet, and they go right behind Schultz. And number 77, George Kavanaugh. Those are tough people up front there. That's good effort on D. Schmidt's part. Martins averages 4.0 yards a carry this year. Actually, Sean McDonald, 30, has a better average of 4.2. So now with nine minutes left to play in the game, Olsen goes to work from the 33-yard line. Oh, he great. didn't get far. Stuckel put the hit on him. Great job that time by uh, Mark Stuckel, number 60. Oh, he's only a sophomore, too. He's going to be a great football player. He moved the chain, but he didn't get much. We'll call it second and a long nine. Gregory has to stop him on this drive. Yeah, they, uh, they sure do. Now we're up the shotgun, Steve. Olsen wants to throw. He wants Dave McDonald, 15. Great effort. Super, super, super throw. Great effort on number 15, Dave McDonald's part. To, uh, boy, he dove for that ball. That's a... That's a great shot. Great shot. Close, but no cigar. They went for all the marbles that time. Makes it third and nine. Sean Sheffield, 64, brings in the play. Mike Dacey on the sideline, telling the Gregory defense what to do. And keeps it goes right pressure now we're going to get a fourth and about uh, 10 from the 32 so it'll be interesting to see what uh, what the schmidt does now ball intended for sean mcdonald he almost came up with another great catch there <laughs> i'll tell you he <laughs> ball a little under thrown, but he almost came up with it and, and good pressure put on him good, that good time uh, by uh smollick that was he almost problem. got it again Smala coming from the linebacker position now, fourth and nine. We'll see how, see if Olsen can put her out of bounds on about seven now. Or Olsen so. to punt. Let's see how the referees mark this. Where did it go out of bounds? Oh, he fouled oh. out about the four. Mark Clark doesn't like it, but that's the way it will stand. And DeSmet has Gregory backed up to their own five-yard line with eight minutes, six seconds left to play. And Gregory trails DeSmet 8-6. Great kick. Great kick by Olsen.
We have a timeout on the field. 8.06 to play in the game, and he's spent hanging on 8-6 over Gregory. I'll tell you, that was a great kick by uh, Dan Olsen there. The, uh, ball, the ball had uh, such great height. It was uh, really tough to, to mark, uh, Jerry, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you can... It uh, across in the air. It didn't bounce across. Yeah, and the, uh, the referee's right in line with that, and uh, I'm sure he's got it in the right spot. Gregory wants to move. First and ten from the five. Both up on a keeper. Brought down by Dan Olson. Picks up about three on the play. Olson and Pocup have really showed well for themselves this afternoon, offensively and defensively, and special teams. You bet, both ways, uh, all four ways. Uh, you know, they're they're both uh, both of them are Mr. Everything. Well, we're getting a pretty good crowd in the dome, fellas, as this game progresses and. We prepare for the finale, 11 AAA coming up after this game between O'Gorman and Yankton. Second and seven from the eight, power eye, the pitch to Cerny. Wants to cut up field, gets across. About the seven yard line, number 77, George Kavanaugh. Boy, he's a good football player. Todd Monroe, 62. And Monroe also. Picked his way pretty good, Jerry, but all of a sudden that was closed up. You bet, that's, uh, that's good defense. It closes up because of the good defense that, uh, that DeSmith's playing right now. The Smith coach, uh, Marv McCune, says Monroe's the cut-up of the team. He's the guy that'll come to Thursday practice with his helmet on backwards. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, uh, I'm kind of a believer in that kind of stuff. You know, if you, if you aren't having a good time enjoying yourself, you know, it's, it's no fun. Turn your headset around. Third and six. Poke up. <laughs> Under pressure. Oh, now he turns it upfield. Got some room. First down. First down, out to about the 20 before Tim Martin stops him. He's got some feet. Oh, he, he does. Feet. Uh, you know, he uh, he may not be able to run 100 meters real fast, but I'll tell you, he can get from uh, from here to there in a, in a big hurry. And we're going to see it on the replay now. Just good individual effort on his part. Gets turned up the field right here. Makes a couple awful good moves. Awful good moves. Enough for the first down. Get him out of uh, a little bit better field position with about 6.30 left in the game. Trailing by two, first and ten from the 20. Woke up rolling left, has some room on the left side, a block Good on block. Olsen. Down to about the 30. Jeff Gilbertson made a great play there. Number 14. We have somebody shaken up on the play from D. Smith. And Number 14. 14. Looks like Jeff Gilbertson. Yeah, he made a great play there. Stayed right with the uh, with the guy that was trying to block him and made the tackle. He's going to be all right, apparently. Lipping a little bit. It's another first down. Six Here it is on the replay again. There's a good block by Cerny right there on Olsen. There's 14 right there uh, coming in and uh, shedding off the blocker and making the tackle. Good effort. All right, first and 10, just across the 30. They give to Cerny out over the left side. He's out to about the 36-yard line. Brings up a second and four. He's uh, explosive. Very explosive. I'll tell you what, that's really great to see that uh, uh, DeSmet had a little, uh, had a lot of momentum, got the ball kicked out of bounds on about the four-yard line, and Gregory just takes the ball, moves it right back up the field, and, uh, uh, you know, they're playing for all the marbles here, and that's the, uh, that's the fun part of this, and that's the beauty of all of it. Now, second and four with almost five and a half minutes left to play in the game. Polka under center, Paul Thomas. Get to Smollett. They got him this time. Nothing there. Charlie Anderson's there to put a hit on. Mark Schultz, 81. 62 is Todd Monroe. And number 77, George Kavanaugh. Here we're going to see it on the replay. There's a whole host of them there. Number 52 is the one that makes, uh, looks like the initial hit there, Charlie Anderson. 505 to play in the game. 8-6, the spin over Gregory. Gregory in possession of the football. Third and four. Big play here. No telling who had that football. <laughs> yeah, it looked, works. looked like Pokup was trying to trying to run that same play again, putting the ball inside to Smolik and pull it out if he had to, but they're going to come up short about three yards. Four minutes, 40 seconds. You got plenty of time. You got to boot the ball away. Well, they might, they might, uh, they might not. You never know. They're going to go for it. 
That's what, like I was saying, uh, you can't you can't afford to punt now. <laughs> Fourth and three <laughs> from the 38. Polka throws left. Pressure by Stuckel. Oh. Well, that brought the crowd to their feet. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, that was a great defensive effort there. I'm not sure if, if that was number 15, uh, Dave McDonald, or who that was, but uh, that'd be a great one to see. That was a great defensive play. Here we come again on the replay. 60, Lyndon Johnson put some pressure there. Put the pressure on the guy that makes the big play right there. Number 15, McDonald. You bet, that's great effort. So DeSmet takes over on the Gregory 34-yard line. The ball at the hash mark on the far side of the field. First and 10 from the 34, 356 left to play. DeSmet leads Gregory 8-6 from the I formation. To give to Sean McDonald. I'll tell you what, you know, that's been about as good a play as any of them for, for DeSmet there tonight. About three or four yards, and uh, they're getting all kinds of good blocking up front out of uh, number 52, Charlie Anderson. 64, uh, Sean uh, Sheffield, and number 70, Devin Wilco. Now, second and six. Shy of the 30. Again, from the eye. Olsen on a keeper. And Jeff Polka puts a hit on him at the 30-yard line. Good defense that time by uh, Gregory. They strung her out pretty good. Yeah, they strung that out very, very well. Uh, not too many times have you seen uh, Olsen kind of be uh, uh, undecided there on whether he's going to uh, pitch the ball or keep it. And we'll Another see it here on the Jerry. replay now. He's kind of undecided a little bit. See, if he'd have turned up there, uh, that probably should have been the right thing to do. Easy to say up here, isn't it? You bet it is. I'm that's a good football player up after here. After looking at him again, you got to make a decision real quick down you there. You bet. Third and a long five. Olsen pitches to Martins. There's the cut. Turns up field. Bumble. And D. Schmidt comes up with the ball there again. Number 81, uh, Mark Shelton. Forty-four Smolik doing a good job defensively. About two minutes and 25 seconds left in here, and uh, we got a big fourth down here for Gregory. Shot of Coach Mar McCune and his assistant to the left of him. Desmet calls the timeout with 2:18 to play in the ball game. It is Desmet with an eight-point or a two-point lead, eight to six over Gregory for the 11A championship here at the Dakota Dome in Vermilion. Back in the Dakota Dome, there you see the turnovers. Desmet two, Gregory two. It's that close. The score eight six. Desmet leads. They have the ball. Fourth down, five yards to go, at about the 29-yard line with two minutes and 18 seconds left to play. That's the situation. Each team has two timeouts left. I'll tell you what, another thing that's really great here, Steve, is look across there and see all those seats uh, just about filled. Well, we got a lot of people in this place tonight, and that's really great. Well, they may be coming for the Sioux Falls O'Gorman and the Yankton game, but they're getting a uh, fine finish here. Oh, I think there's plenty of the Schmidt and Gregory fans here also. Olsen from the shotgun wants to throw. Eagle Star leaves his feet on the pump. He'll have the first down. And that was a big down. Ooh, that sure was. Off the big down. De Schmidt, uh, they finally determined they are going to keep the football. That's a case where he couldn't find anybody he wanted to throw. And we're going to see it on the replay now. Eagle Star there jumps up, bats the ball down. Olsen just kind of moves around him. He makes about four good moves there all by himself. Boy, he's a football player. Watch number 61 here. He just holds him right up and makes sure he doesn't throw him down too hard because they're clear out of bounds. That's God a good step. effort on uh, Stephen's part. First and 10 now to give to Sean McDonald. He gets to almost the 20-yard line. Brings up a second down, eight-yard situation. And Gregory wants a timeout. That leaves one timeout for Gregory with under two minutes to play, 159 of the ball game, and DeSmet leading eight to six, and they have the football. Back in the dome where Gregory trails DeSmet, 8-6. DeSmet has the football, 159 left to play, situation second and eight. No. Yeah, we've got 
a one time out left for uh, for Gregory and see what uh, see what the Schmidt does there. That was kind of an interesting call that they had their last time out of the shotgun and uh, they wanted to keep the football and uh, Coach McCuney chose that route and uh, made sure his bread and butter guy had the football and they got first down again from the shotgun. Gregory with a lot of people up front. Holcomb's one of them, and so is number 60, Mark Stuckel, and they bring quarterback Dan Olson down. Call that a loss of two. You bet. It's going to be uh, third and about 11 now. We're going to have a little isolation. That's a run all the way. Just made it look like uh, like it was going to be a uh, pass, and it was good defensive effort by uh, by Polkup and by uh, Mark Stuckel. Well, Gregory runs from the split six defense, but they're bringing their linebackers now. You bet. They're they're all coming. Third and ten from the 22. Olsen, a quarterback from the eye formation. They give to McDonald. Out across the 20, but he'll be far short of a first down, and Gregory uses their final timeout. With one minute and 14 seconds left to play. McDonald picked up three yards on the last carry. 1.14 to play. Gregory out of timeouts now, Steve, and uh, Despet has two remaining. Well, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Mike is out there trying to get uh, things squared around so they know what they're going to do uh, offensively when they get the ball as well as uh, what they've got to do defensively here to stop uh, uh, stop DeSchmidt from getting the first down. And they got about uh, DeSchmidt's got seven big yards they got to get. And, be interesting to see what they do on defense and what uh, Schmidt does offensively. What are they going to do here, Jerry? They're going to run or pass, uh, try to pick up the first down. They're going to go for a field goal, maybe. Well, I don't know where they got a kicker that uh, it'd be about a 45-yard kicker, a little better. Yeah, it'd be uh, 25, 27, be about a 37-yard kick is what it would be. But I don't think that's uh, that's not their thoughts right now. Uh, I think I would guess that that uh, Olson's going to be the guy with the with the football and. Uh, I'll be very surprised if they put it up someplace out in the flat where it could be picked off and it could be run back. If they're going to throw it, uh, probably it's going to be somewhere down the middle to McDonald. And uh, uh, my guess would be that Olsen is going to keep the football or he's going to throw it down the middle somewhere. A little turn-in pattern down the middle. Or you bet. Nothing pattern. on the outside that no. could be picked off and run back. That sounds right. Well, now that you two have it figured out, I think I'll go down to the field and see what Marvin McCune decided to call. I suppose you're going you're gonna to tell us you're going to punt now, Steve, huh? No, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> Quick kick. Quick, Quick kick. kick. 114, fourth down, seven yards to go. And it's a quick pitch. Out to Tim Martins, who gets across to the 15-yard line, shy of the first down. I believe Gregory will take over. Gregory's going to have it at their own 15-yard line. I thought they had pitched to Martins that last play, to be honest with you. They spotted it. Way to the outside, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, here's Gregory now. They're set up. They're ready to go. They've got to get in eight seconds to see if they can get oh, 86 the yards. they got to move quickly. 85 yards and 64 seconds. Cerny's the guy that can do it. He's going to get out of bounds. Down to about the 22-yard line. And you'll see people running out there now. You bet. Down and distance doesn't become a factor so much with 58 seconds left. Chain gang can take it home right now. Now please. Well, they might get one more first down and uh, then they can take it home. But it is second and two. Polk of a quarterback. He drops back. Under pressure from Charlie Anderson, 52. Batted down by number 60, Lyndon Johnson. Great defensive effort. That's what they needed right there. Uh, that's what De Schmidt needed right here. What it does is kill the clock with 53 seconds left. Gregory trailing DeSmet by two, eight, six. They have no timeouts left. They'll be trying to, one, get some yardage and get out of bounds. Yeah, they've got, now they've got third down and about uh, two here now, so the down and distance uh, does become a factor now because uh, they're going to need more than two plays. Chances are to score the way at least you would take that now. Gregory was top rank. DeSmet was... Or uh, Despect uh, top ranked and Gregory second rated in the AP poll. Screen to Clark down the sideline. I think Desmet put. Can't see who made the play. Number Mark Schultz 81's there. You number bet. 33 and number 33 Tim also Martin. for uh, Desmet. Uh, Tim Martin brings up a fourth down situation. One yard to go. The ball's on the 23 yard line. 
and DeSmet may have helped Gregory out by calling a timeout. They have one remaining. 45 seconds to play in the ball game. It's the Smet eight and Gregory six. We'll be back for the final 45 seconds of this contest in a moment. Back in the dome. 45 seconds left to play in this class 11 man, class A 11 man championship game where DeSmet leads Gregory 8 6. DeSmet on defense. Gregory with the ball, wearing white, trimmed in red. Both of a quarterback. He rolls left. Uh -huh. Freddie Timp has him. Number 22, super play. He's been making them uh, all day long. Says he's 5'10", 160, and I'd say that'd be a little bit strong, wouldn't you, as so, far as his height and uh, weight? The Smith takes over now on the Gregory 17-yard line. They're and just going to kill the final 40 seconds with a couple of plays here, Jerry. Probably yeah. fall on the ball and take yeah. to a lot of 25 seconds. Yeah, and all they, uh, all they have to do is run one play and not fumble the ball, and uh, the ball game should be over. They don't even have to run another one. Danny Olson at quarterback. He'd done that before. One cool customer. Well, as you said a moment ago, Jerry, you haven't enjoyed this game very much. Huh? Hey, I've enjoyed this one. <laughs> I've enjoyed this one just like I've enjoyed all of them. <laughs> Six the next seconds. contest to follow in about 35 minutes or so will be Sioux Falls or Gorman and the Anglin for the 11 AAA Championship. There's the gun. The ball game is over, and it's DeSmet, the 11 8 champion, with a very narrow 8 to 6 victory over Gregory. Well, I guess the posters had that one tagged pretty close. Uh, DeSmet was top ranked, and Gregory was second rated in the AP Class 11A poll. So uh, we're going to have the presentation of the awards here momentarily. Championship trophy and the uh, Runner-up trophy will go to these two fine football teams. Say what, that was an awful well-played game, Jim. Uh, there's a good shot right out there uh, of uh, Olsen uh, holding up that towel with the number one on it. They're both winners. It couldn't, uh, couldn't have been any closer. It couldn't have been any better game. Uh, they both played great on offense and uh, moved the ball up and down the field, and both of them were great on defense. That was a great football game. Good sportsmanship short after each game. Uh, each team lines up and congratulates the other team and, and uh, for great performances, and we've seen it for all uh, four games so far here now. And it's been uh, just a classic performance for the first ever South Dakota State High School football playoffs. The Smith entered the game with a highly touted passing offense, but it boiled down to the defense being a critical factor in this game, allowing a good rushing team to only six points. You bet. And uh, DeSmet moved the ball pretty well on the ground themselves. You know, there were there are just all kinds of all kinds of good things that uh, that took place in this game from uh, uh, from the the play that was on the field offensively and defensively. Uh, some of the gestures you see on the sideline and uh, the fact that there's all these people in here. Just uh, tons of things are uh, awful good. You're looking at, uh, you were looking there at Mike Dacey, the head football coach at Gregory, which just lost this championship game. There's uh, Mike, a little despondent, but he's going to cheer up his players. They feel badly, of course, but it can only be one winner. And uh, they're all true champions, Jerry. I guess if we talked about before, to get here, they have to be champions. And the runner-up trophies now is being presented by Mrs. Jackie Jarrett of Britain and Dale Schneider of Hitchcock. Dale there giving the runner-up trophy to Mike Dacey and his Gregory team. They are members of the Board of Control of the South Dakota High School Activities Association. And each player receives a medal for their performance here in the playoffs. On the championship trophy, the coach Barb McKeown and his Desmet Bulldogs. Hard-fought victory over a great Gregory team. That is the definition of happy. <laughs> Martin McHugh started as a basketball coach, has been coaching football for four years. Told me before the game, maybe he does like coaching basketball better, but I don't know if he can say that today. Ask him right now. <laughs> All right. 
Let's go downfield now to Mike Shermer, who is with the winning coach, Barb McHugh. Mike? Well, Marv, a super effort. Uh, that thing turned into your basic white knuckler at the end. Yeah, uh, we knew what we had to do come out the second half. Our ground game worked in the first half, except for a couple mistakes. Made a couple big uh, clutch passes. Olsen and McDonald connected for a fourth down and 10-yard pass there and kept our drive going for a touchdown. Two really fine ball clubs. Gregory really surprised us. They're a very tough ball team. Uh, they had a lot of success, but we got a couple breaks the second half and went out and scored. We talked a couple times in the playoffs about swarming defenses. You just put the Bulldogs right into that category, just like a swarm of bees. We had to do that. Uh, they were hurting us outside. We started crashing our outside linebackers. We had to get something to stop the pressure on the outside, and our middle linebackers came up and filled well, and we were in the backfield a lot. We talked at halftime about uh, Olsen. Well, I guess in the long run, he did prove to be the difference. Sure did. Uh, that extra point was a kind of a big key, and we knew he could option in there. He threw a clutch pass on fourth down. Uh, he may not have shown his ability to pass quite so much as far as stats, but he threw some nice balls tonight. And uh, running back Sean McDonald for a little kid really, really ran well, and our line did a super job, got some big first downs when we needed him. Congratulations, Marv. You're the first 11A champion in South Dakota. Got to feel good. Feels great. Feels great. Hope somebody can have the, have the same opportunity. Every kid that plays football deserves this opportunity. Congratulations, partner. That's all I got, guys. All right. Thank you very much, Mike and Marv McCune. Well, not too much scoring in that ball game. It was 8-6. to six. He spent over Gregory. Ken Hurst of Kellogg TV Control will show you how it happened. Thanks, Jim. Let's recap the scoring highlights and other highlights from this particular ball game. First of all, as the game got started, DeSmet had a very good drive going. Now, they took the opening kickoff, but then number nine, Gregory's Kelly Gass, recovered a fumble on the 17 to set up the score at 4.30 to go in the first quarter. Number seven, Bob Cerny, on a six-yard run off the left side, capping a 52-yard drive in 11 plays. Cerny again was called on for the two-point conversion. He was short. It did not uh, go in. It was six to nothing for Gregory. In the second quarter, no scoring, but here's a great run. A pitch out to Bob Cerny of Gregory. Again, 48-yard run. Inside the 10 is where he was brought down. It was first and goal, and it looked like Gregory was on the way to score again. The next couple of plays, lost yardage. Here's a 41-yard field goal attempt that fell short, didn't have enough steam, and the first half ended with Gregory leading 6 to nothing. Early in the second half, number one Dan Olson of DeSmet intercepts Jeff Pokoff of Gregory on the 42-yard line, running it back to midfield to set up the DeSmet scoring drive. And with 5.05 to play in the third quarter, number 33, Dennis Martins goes in on a two-yard plunge to make the score 6-6. Six to six. Gregory and DeSmet all tied up. And number one again, Dan Olson, the quarterback, on a two-point conversion attempt. It's good. And DeSmet takes the lead at the end of three periods by a score of 8-6. to six. In the fourth quarter, no scoring, but there were some highlights. Number one, Dan Olson, with a fourth down and necessary yardage scrambling for that first down to retain possession of that football. Gregory, of course, can't score without the football. And on a fourth and seven, Gregory holds here. And... Uh, Bob Cerny on the play following this uh, defensive dig in, standoff, what do you want to call it, does get a good game. But as the clock runs out, on fourth and one, on the Gregory 33, the defense holds and take over on downs, and it's all over but the shouting and the awarding of the trophies. The final score again, the Smet eight and Gregory six, a hard fun ball game, a lot of great defense and at times very explosive offense. Eight to six, the Smet beating Gregory for this ball game. We'll have more highlights, of course, at halftime of the O'Gorman Yankton game. Let's go back to Jim in the Dome. Well, Mike, I'll phrase it this way. DeSmet ended up with two more points than you did. Just a whale of a ball game. Was there a reason, uh, what was the reason for them to come up two points more than you, you had? Well, uh, they, I feel a real key to the ball game was uh, fourth quarter. They had fourth and seven. Kid made a diving catch down here. We had him covered well. We just didn't break it up. Uh, I think that was the key to the ball game. They went in and scored on that drive. Outside of that, they had little spurts and drives, but they never mounted a long, successful drive to score on us. And uh, another real key, uh, we fumbled on an option play down here on about 15-yard line. If he'd have caught it, I think he might have scored. But those are the breaks of the football game. We played well. I'm not ashamed of our kids. Uh, I think we showed that we've also got a great football team in Gregory, South Dakota. 
seemed like they contained pretty well defensively the second half. Yeah. Uh, no, we had a few plays, a few breakaways. Uh, interception really kind of hurt us too we were driving but uh, yeah the Smith has a fine football team it was one of those games that could have gone either way it went to them this time who knows next time it could be Gregory but it was a super football game congratulations for having your kids ready to come in here well thank you uh, I know on behalf of Gregory and uh, our school and our town and the kids